Hi everybody, welcome back to Darling Borough Model Railway. My name is Richard. Not much has changed in the last week uh, from the layout. Um, the only thing that's really changed is my hair. Um, it's all gone. So yeah, my uh, mullet has gone. Anyway, moving swiftly on. <laughs> um, I was talking about how I managed to save uh, nearly £800 setting up the shed. And it kind of made me realise that I really wanted to kind of share um, more tips for anyone else who's in a sort of similar situation to me um, who wants to kind of think frugally and uh, basically save themselves some money on making their model railway. So, without further ado, here's some tips for you. When it comes to raw materials, especially for your bench work, it's always worth checking out your local builders' merchants or big box hardware stores, for example B&Q in the UK. They may have a section for discarded or recycled wood that's no longer required. Most of the time it's laminate flooring or small offcuts from customers who have finished projects. However, you might find useful pieces of wood here and for the price of a small donation to a local charity, they can be yours. Rather than buying new wood, See if you can recycle any older wood, perhaps from a table, bed frame or desk. If you can, this will mean it's free. When creating terrain, for example hills and other scenery, you can use cardboard rather than more expensive materials. Cardboard can be cut and shaped as required and provide a strong underlying structure for your layouts. You can also use cardboard to build models, buildings, tunnels and all sorts of items. It really is very versatile. If you don't have any boxes yourself, try speaking to a local supermarket. The chances are they will be throwing lots out and would be happy to donate some to you. When buying any electrical item, you probably find it's packaged in polystyrene, normally a waste product. This can be glued and shaped to form a rigid, lightweight structure for hills and mountains. Polystyrene can also be used as a cheap alternative to insulation for a shed or loft. If you don't have any, again, it's always worth checking out your local builders merchants or big box hardware stores. You could ask at local supermarkets or shops that sell white goods, as they may have some that will be going in the bin. Chances are they'd be happy to donate it to you for free. If you are looking for basing materials, such as sand and light gravel, Rather than buying expensive hobby scenic products, try buying large bags of sharp sand or building ballast instead. You may be able to buy damaged or open bags cheaply, which the company wouldn't be able to sell otherwise. This can be sieved out and sorted into the different grades you require. Save money on expensive rock molds by producing your own using tin foil. Stick several layers together so that it's nice and firm and then this will allow you to shape it as you require. By scrunching the foil up you will get added details which will look great as rocks. You can then use plaster to create interesting rock faces for your layout. If you are planning on creating rocks from bark material, have a look in a local forest sometimes bark can fall off trees which will work just as well in addition bark pieces are often sold in large bags in garden centers these tend to be much cheaper than scenic bark remember to treat natural products to prevent bacteria fungus or mold growing which could ruin your layouts you can also try creating your own scenic materials scatter materials can be created using a mixture of fine sawdust and acrylic paint. If you are looking at creating scenic material from sawdust, it might be worthwhile having a word with your local sawmill or furniture producer. It's often likely that rather than paying to have it disposed, they'd be willing to sell it to you at a fraction of the cost, or even donate it to you for free. When it comes to adhesives, PVA is your friend. Cheap craft PVA will work fine. You do not need to spend more money on expensive 
commercial products, as they are pretty much the same thing. When it comes to paint, look for cheap acrylic paints in your local art store, pound shop or DIY centre. Often these come in a huge variety of colours, or you might be able to buy a set for a very reasonable price. Stores that provide paint for decorating are also worth visiting. They may have sample pots which you can buy very cheaply. Save money on expensive weathering powders. Simply buy a set of chalk pastels. You can usually buy a set with multiple colours cheaper than a single tub of weathering powder and grind them up yourself. Ground chalk pastels often work just as good as weathering powders. There you go, there's 10 tips there for how you can keep your model railway fairly low budget like I have to, uh, due to lack of funds basically. <laughs> what I will be doing in future videos is I will be showing more tips for you. That's just some of the tips I've got and uh, looking into each of those in more detail. Um, for example, I will be explaining more about creating your own flocks, producing rock molds, using tin foil, creating rocks from bark material, creating your own scenic materials, etc, etc. So do keep watching uh, the channel. Don't forget to like and subscribe and see you again next week.